Hi, welcome to the Sprint 126 review. Uh, Sprint ended on the 9th. Next slide, please. Well, let's jump right into this one. Uh, okay, so. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, as you'll notice, there was a rather significant drop off in uh, PRs this past Sprint, both in merged and opened, um, and the backlog is growing. So, uh, Marianne did give me some data. Took a quick peek uh, last year. This time frame, I was wondering with Thanksgiving holiday and stuff. It, it, there was a drop off then, also not quite as steep as this. So we'll have to uh, keep an eye on this and see. Uh, you know, is this a new trend or is this an anom anomaly? Uh, next slide, please. And just the distribution of PRs by a uh, type. Um, you know, still had a large number of enhancement coming in, and refactoring was number two. Um, which is kind of what we expect right now. Next slide, please. And the overall health report, um, the only, the big jump outs there are the, uh, the Managed IQ UI Classic, the other issues, 70, 78, and then the Managed IQ. Um, again, this, the data on this has been problematic, so let's just take a look and make sure uh, it's actually valid. Um, and we're still looking to provide maybe a different uh, different report going forward. Next slide, please. And now this slide comes to play. Okay. So we'll have Carol do the community. Uh, Harpreet will go over UI. Adam will discuss providers. Um, Tina will do automate. Uh, Joe V will do the platform. Mike is there for QE. And next slide, please. All right. Um, thanks. Uh, can can you hear me? Yep. Yep. I'm assuming yes. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Um, so for the community update this week, we have a couple of new, well, one new blog post and one update. Um, uh, the first one is by the X Lab Steampunk team. They are introducing the Microsoft Azure Stack provider. So please check it out. Um, then Joe added an authentication configuration example to the um, troubleshooting managed IQ authentication blog post um, from last year. But um, he's been constantly uh, adding stuff and updating the blog post with a lot of good uh, information. So again, the link is there. And finally, um, for DEF CONF, uh, Czech Republic in Brno uh, next month, January, is the, the Event is from January 24th to 26th, but we'll have a booth on the first two days, Friday and Saturday. And uh, I have already a couple of volunteers, but um, as you know, if, if you are in attending the event or in the area and if you would like to help out for a couple of hours at the booth, please contact me and um, let me know. Thank you and next slide, please. Thanks, Karen. Hello, everyone. Total of 44 PRs merged across the UI repos. That includes three enhancements, five bug fixes, and a lot of technical debt related PRs. Um, for the bug fixes in the sprint, multiple issues were fixed in Control Explorer on action edit screen. There was an issue that was fixed with deleting and editing of existing attribute value pairs, and also an issue was fixed with edit of description field on existing action record. A JavaScript null error was fixed on machine credential edit screen while trying to read an options hash when options were not saved for a machine cre credential record. Um, a save button response issue was fixed on user edit screen when changing group assignment for the user. Similar type of uh, issue was fixed with save reset button availability on subscriptions screen in Configuration Explorer. And the next two issues were kind of related to each other. Issues were fixed with custom buttons and dialogues. This was an edge condition caused by deletion of a custom button that was associated with the dialogue, causing issues with deletion of dialogues from UI and also some issues with adding button groups and custom buttons under existing groups. So that got fixed. And for enhancements, <clears throat> V2V will, V2V will be having a new setting to configure the maximum number of concurrent conversions per VMware host. In order to prepare for that, it made sense to rename existing max concurrent tasks per host in, 
into max concurrent tasks per conversion host to reduce the confusion. And for the next two items, I have screenshots to go over. So next slide, please. In plan creation wizard on type and schedule step, in case of some of the selected VMs can't be pre-copied, so the option is disabled on the screen. And now we have a dis um, uh, icon that's displayed on the screen with a popover to show the text message uh, with more information. So as you can see on the screen, there's a popover. Uh, right, bottom right. Next slide, please. New RBAC features were added under reconfigure VMs features in roles features tree that allows user to limit what a user can see on reconfigure VMs form based upon their role. As you can see on the screen previously, a user used to see all of the fields on the form, but now those can be limited based upon the user's role. And that's all I have for the UI. Over to Adam. names to all of the EMS operations methods. Um, this is what started last sprint. He continued the sprint uh, with nine more methods. He has a nice list of all of the ones that he has to change and he's almost done, so I'm sure it'll be completed next sprint. Uh, Keenan was moving some logic for queuing uh, capacity and utilization targets out of the base metrics capture class into uh, a place where the providers could override it. So it's basically all just the same code moved into a place where it could be modified by different providers. Uh, Oleg improved the VM scan test coverage for two providers, OpenStack and SCVMM. Uh, this is so that we can feel a little bit better about the refactoring that he's doing to improve the pluggability of smart state. Um, and there's a nice overview on that issue there. OpenStack enabled targeted refresh for volume templates. There is an issue where if you created a new uh, bootable image uh, for a template and then immediately tried to provision, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't there because a full refresh hadn't run yet. So now uh, you can do a targeted refresh for volume templates and that improves the usability for um, that, that workflow where you're creating a new image and then immediately provisioning from it. Next slide. There we go. Um, so last sprint, I think it was last sprint or two sprints ago, they removed the option for V3 uh, for overt. Uh, there was a setting to use overt engine SDK, which is essentially version four. Uh, so they went through and removed all of those settings since it's the only option now. And so that cleaned up a lot of nice um, settings, just reducing the number of knobs you can turn down. They also track a VM if it requires a restart. So this uh, required a new schema. There's a new column, uh, restart required, I believe, on a VM or template. Uh, some reconfigure options in overt require a VM to be rebooted before the config change is uh, applied. So that includes changing the number of CPUs on a running VM. So if you do a reconfigure, uh, the next refresh will pick that up. Market is requiring restart. So if the users in the UI are wondering why their VM doesn't have the right uh, CPUs that they expect, we can say, hey, it's because this VM hasn't been restarted since the reconfigure was applied. Uh, for VMware, this is a pretty big one. We now default to streaming refresh. Uh, so all of the benefits that that has coming along with it, it's now the default. It had been an option for uh, the last two releases, but uh, pretty soon it's going to be the only option. Uh, the first step of that is making it default and then a couple of cleanups required before we make it the only option. Um, biggest uh, enhancements there, except for the, uh, the first and the scheduled daily full refreshes, everything is targeted. Um, where before only VM and host updates were targeted, now every single update is essentially a targeted refresh for VMware, so that just reduces the, the load on the system, reduces the time it takes to get changes into the database. Uh, it bypasses MIQQ, so before the event catcher would raise an, uh, raise an event, it would be processed by automate, it would get put on the queue, and then the refresh worker would pick it up, and that, that whole loop took a, a significant amount of time. Uh, so now, essentially, changes on VMware are almost, you know, they're near, near real time uh, to get it into the database from the, uh, from the vCenter, so that's nice. On the vCloud side, we also removed the option for legacy refresh so uh, and, and deleted all the old code. So now uh, vCloud is graph refresh only. Um, the cloud manager had graph refresh written, but nobody ever wrote the network manager. So I had to go through and write that um, before we could actually remove the old code. 
And that's it for providers. Next slide. Thanks, Adam. Good morning. We had six PRs merge this sprint, all created by Lucy. Thank you, Lucy. Um, Ansible service catalog items have an execution TTL parameter, which specifies the total time needed for the playbook to finish. Automate uses this value to calculate the state machine retry interval. This enhancement calculates an execution TTL based on the automate max retries and retry interval for when the user specified value is not provided. Previous enhancements were made to set state bars with values defined from playbook set stats, set, set stats data. This enhancement builds a network and allows users to update objects based on values defined in set stats based on a naming convention. Under certain circumstances, orchestration provisioning errors are not being caught properly. The provision method would wait 10 minutes and time out. This change catches the error and aborts right away. The dialog for service reconfigure is supposed to populate values previously used. Because the reconfigured dialog values were not saved properly, the dialog was instead shown with original provision values. This change resolves that issue by saving the reconfigured dialog options into the dialog hash. As a follow-up to recent changes made to deprecate the update attributes method, Lucy renamed the service orchestration update methods to avoid conflicts. That's it for Automate. Next slide, over to Joe. Thank you, Tina. So uh, an impressive 38 PRs were merged across a platform space to sprint. The noteworthy ones are as follows. Starting with enhancements, Enan contributed one to streamline cap, cap and new queuing. Annie contributed a couple more to leverage new Rails features. As Adam mentioned, Dan is enhancing the code to add queue name to a few places. Alberto made an impressive uh, enhancement to update the Appliance Console CLI so that now it will um, support configuring OpenID Connect authentication, which makes that a lot easier. That's painful to do manually. Um, Jason updated us to the new uh, cross repo gem. He also contributed a performance enhancement for the when you're doing development environment so that the database doesn't get seeded on, on startup since people are going to probably seed uh, their own test databases. JAR contributed enhancements to drop support for forking of workers and instead uh, using spawn by default. For bugs, Nick C fixed an issue where in a container deployment, the, the lookup of a worker by PID is, is failing because it's not reliable in that environment. And instead, he'll use a GUID. Jason fixed a bug where currency code silently failed validation for a new symbol, UZS, which I don't even know where that is. I looked it up and I forgot. Uh, Jason also addressed a bug to raise an exception if an invalid path is passed to the autoload. Next slide, please. Next slide, there we go. Okay, for techno debt and refactoring, Rebor addressed some with the renaming of the model chargeback rate detailed currency, which is a mouthful to simply currency. Nixie addressed some technical debt by removing the wait for stop before restart monitor status and review, removing the method MIQ servers restart worker, since it really doesn't restart the worker anyway. Uh, Nixie also simplified MIQ server monitor workers by removing the sync message variable and the return value. This PR also provided a performance improvement by greatly reducing the number of loops through the server's workers. And Nixi removed the sync of the blacklist events, which really only needs to do to trigger a, a settings reload. Dan improved the all EMS in zone method by returning a relation instead of an array, avoiding an unnecessary creation of the object. Dan also removed the no longer used orchestration stack class, classes method update stack queue. Alberto removed a um, sample configuration status message that had accidentally been duplicated in a previous PR. And Joe R addressed some technical debt by removing no longer used options parser settings constant, the unused storage to host method, named with the number two, of course. Um, and the unused arguments passed when starting the e EMV server. And on, on continuous integration, Keenan um, contributed two PRs to improve code coverage reports, and Nixie contributed to the ongoing test coverage improvements. And that's it for the platform space. On to Mike for QE updates. Next slide, please. All right, so just some uh, high-level updates in the slide, uh, and then I have two specific notes about uh, framework changes. Uh, so first, I'd like to, to welcome our newest uh, contributor, uh, Devi Das, uh, who is in uh, Pune. 
Uh, he's already contributed some tests and some test fixes. So excited to, to have him on the team. Uh, got some high-level PR stats from this sprint, uh, where we had 18 PRs labeled with test automation and 13 with uh, fixed test. Obviously, our, our focus for this sprint uh, has been test automation. Uh, the other thing that uh, contributors have been focusing on is adding um, BZ markers to our test cases uh, so that we can automatically set uh, some QE test coverage flags. Uh, I've also got some stats for our uh, most active contributors there. You can see Parthvi, uh, Vala with uh, 11 PRs and, and Ganesh with nine. Uh, and Justin and, and Yevgen tied there for uh, for six. Uh, the framework changes uh, that we saw that had some impact uh, were one uh, fixes from Yevgen for our uh, Artifactor uh, PyTest plugin, which was blocking some test results from getting properly uploaded to our result tracker. Uh, and two, we had uh, a change to our uh, release script that is going to start putting some more, uh, giving us some more statistics and data put in our release. So that's pretty much it for, for QE. Thanks. Okay, that concludes uh, the Sprint 126 review. The next review will be on January 8th. That's a four week sprint because we have the shutdown coming up soon. So we'll see everybody in four weeks. Thank you. Thanks, Marianne. Thanks, everybody. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you.